Wife of seven years cheated on me, now everyone in my circle friends, her parents and my parents are suggesting me to take her back. Don't know what to do. I met my wife ten years ago, when we were both in college. We dated for three years before being married for seven. She is a gorgeous and great lady who is adored by everyone in my family. I discovered my wife was having an affair with a mutual acquaintance of ours four months ago. It was a one-and-a-half-month affair, and she was being extremely shady at the time, ignoring my messages and turning me down every time I tried to start. I suspected something was wrong. I stooped but discovered nothing, so I hired a private investigator and had evidence within a week. She was having an affair with a mutual acquaintance of ours. When I challenged her, she admitted to having an affair. She instantly began crying and pleading. When they are caught, they basically do all of the standard cheater moves. I pressed her for all the specifics, including a full timetable, and she gave me everything at night, mainly because she was having an affair on another phone. She told me she only had with him four times and that the rest of the time they were just hanging around and having fun. Three days later, more sobbing and self-pitying, she informed me that she had destroyed all contracts with him and would do whatever it took to make our marriage work. She offered MC. I refused, telling her to leave me alone. I felt injured, misled, and degraded. She relocated to live with her parents. She began messaging me every hour about how much she loves me, how much she regrets this, and how she would do everything to preserve our marriage. After two days of absolutely ignoring her, I texted her that we were divorcing. She panicked out and began to have emotional breakdowns, and my phone began to fill up with calls from her parents, sister, and friends, telling me not to terminate the marriage and to give her another opportunity. Later that day, she wrote a lengthy post on Facebook about how she screwed up and how she damaged her marriage, essentially confessing her affair publicly. But I was certain about my choice. She even insisted on a lie detector exam to prove to me that she had never cheated in the past, blah blah. I asked for some alone time to absorb everything. Since then, we've been living apart. All of this happened four months ago. I requested for divorce last week, and she burst into tears, pleading for another chance. She then went to my parents and requested them to persuade me not to divorce. My folks and her parents attempted to persuade me to sort things out last night, and practically all of our common acquaintances told me how courageous she was to reveal her affair when she made her FB post, and that she loves me and that I should give her a chance. I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. She is sincerely contrite and regrets this, I can guarantee you. I adore her, and her betrayal pains me the most. I'm a loss on what to do. How are things going for anybody who has reconciled, don't have children yet, but we want to have them when the epidemic is ended. We both run businesses and collaborate. I haven't spoken to her in about three months, solely for business purposes. Here's the latest. After reading all of your comments in PM, I decided to contact my parents and inform them that I was filing for divorce. After an hour, she contacted me weeping, pleading with me not to terminate it. And she encouraged me to at least see her in person since I hadn't seen her or spoken about the affair since the D-Day. Every time I spoke, I disregarded the conversation about the affair. She said that she would explain everything to me, that I will hear her side of the story, and that whatever choice I choose, she will respect. Because I don't know what was going on and don't know much about the affair, it will provide as closure for me. As a result, I've decided to meet her on Sunday. That's all there is to it. Update 2. As previously agreed, we both met on Sunday. She was in a bad mood. I haven't seen her in a long time. We discussed our relationship and I requested her to remove her FB post, which she did. I inquired about the affair. Why did she cheat on me? She admitted to me that she was stupid and selfish at the time. She didn't hold me responsible for the affair. She informed me that they were casually conversing when he began talking about his affairs. She gave me text texts from both of them, in which he was boasting about his exciting life outside of marriage. She expressed her curiosity, and one thing led to another. There were multiple messages in which he instructed my wife on how to conceal the affair. He advised her to get a second phone and have it in her vehicle at all times. I made screenshots of everything. She then pleaded for forgiveness, which I did, but I couldn't get over this. Divorce had always been my default choice. She pleaded with me to consider marital counseling. She said that she would never date anybody else again. If she does, it will be my fault. I'm not particularly bothered. We will continue to collaborate because this was both of our dream projects, in terms of our mutual buddy. The last I heard, his wife, and he had chosen to reconcile, because children were involved. 
I feel terrible for his wife. She had no idea what type of monster he was. We're divorcing, and I've determined never to be in another relationship again. Update 3. Everything in my life is going apart today, and three days after I informed her of my choice, she drank phenol. Thankfully, she was rescued and is still recovering. Every day, I pay her a visit to see how she's doing. I feel terrible and really guilty. We've made the decision to reconcile and work on our marriage. She would be totally healed in a month, and I have to leave the nation to start a new life. Everyone in our buddy group has dubbed me a heartless in the last two weeks. My two dearest pals were the only individuals that stuck by me throughout this. I'm quite thankful to have them. My parents were furious because I had driven her to suicide. I also discovered that both of my parents were adulterers. My father was the first to cheat on my mother. My mother then pursued a vengeance affair. That explains a lot about why they were so supportive of my wife. I adore my wife, and I can't bear the thought of her inflicting pain on herself. I assumed that the divorce would be a fresh chapter in our life, and that we would be able to move on. However, things did not go as planned. She still desires our marriage and wants to be with me. Thank you for taking the time to read my story. Story 2 Me, 39 male, with my wife 40 female, 15 years, suspected she cheated 12 years ago. Should I bring it up now? We resided in an apartment building on the second story over a bustling downtown street 12 years ago. I was ready to go into bed when I saw a used condom on the inner edge of the windowsill, very close to my side of the bed, almost touching the bed. At this time, we hadn't worn condoms in years. The window was roughly a foot open with no screens. I was astonished and shouted, GR my wife was in bed at the moment and didn't respond much. Just like, what exactly is it? Someone had to have tossed it out the window. On the second story, we lived on a bustling street. I took some tissue to pick it up and toss it away, and I commented on how huge the condom was. I'd never seen one that big before. I fell asleep after purchasing the it flew through the window theory. A few months later, it began worrying me a bit, just some doubts. But since my wife has a strong dislike for cheaters, I assumed she would never do such a thing. But then my questions regarding the mechanics of how the condom got into our room persisted. The window had a foot-deep elaborate metal balcony. If purled from the street up, there is very little space for a condom to fit through. It would have to be a flawless shot. So some wicked person would have the condom someplace, go to our street, which is quite exposed on a major road, choose our window, and attempt to throw a perfect throw over a curly, ornate, metal railing into our window. And I'm getting stirred up as I type this. This could not have occurred. And my wife wants me to think that's precisely what occurred. The most likely scenario was that the condom was thrown from a window above ours and was blown into our room by the wind. But I go over the physics of this again and again, and the wind would have had to be very strong for the condom to travel straight down. Fit between the window and the ornate railing balcony, and then do a 90-degree spin precisely where our window was open a foot and land a foot or so inside our room. The condom was not hanging outside the window at all. It was entirely inside the room so I felt terribly nighty for the last eight or nine years. The overwhelming likelihood seems to be that someone used a condom in our bed, placed it next to our bed when completed, and then forgot to throw it away. So here is a lengthy article to show you what keeps me up at night. This identical scenario, these same specifics, and more information, and the same calculated probabilities of the various condom mystery explanations keep running through my brain, and I can't get them out. Thoughts will go away for a few weeks or months, still there but not as intense. And then one night they will return and make it impossible to sleep, or during the day they will return and make it impossible to work. So I suppose I need to see a therapist about the mystery. My rational mind is baffled as to how the condom got there, and it is driving me insane. Should I seek treatment for this so that I can stop thinking about it? Do I inform my wife why I'm going to therapy if I do? Just mentioning my concerns about her would be very damaging to her which is why I haven't said it in 12 years. At the same time, the condom is interfering with my everyday life and making me angry at times, and she has no idea what is troubling me. How can I broach the matter with her? Even deciding what words to use perplexes me, since one way to phrase it would be softer and nicer than another.